Well, welcome back into Mid Norfolk and the farm garden here on a beautiful midsummer's morning. Not quite, I suppose. We're only on around the middle of June, but the summer's finally arrived here with a bit of warm weather and some bright morning sunshine. So we're going to give you a little bit of a garden tour, take you around some of the garden and show you just what's looking good right now. This is Valerian. comes in a variety of shades. It's pure white, it's one of my particular favourites, but if you really want to grow Valerian, you're probably going to go for the ready pink variety and just let's go and show you that. And here we are. This is a big area of mainly self-seeded Valerian. You can see the different shades that we've got here from this lovely dark version through to the crossed hybridised slight lightly pink coming from those whites. This is a very very easy plant to grow and you can see it's mass planting here none of which has been actually planted it's all just self seeded and if you don't deadhead this then the very fine fluffy seed will set and you'll get masses of them coming up. Here's exactly what to look for this is a clump of young valerian seedlings just on the back end of this pot you can see this one's starting to grow out if you're going to transplant them and want to move them now's the time to do it because it's got a really thick deep tap root so you want to get them young and move them from your seed beds but that's what to spot got all sorts coming up in here mainly hollyhocks as you can see a little bit of uh, oriental poppy as well seeded through this area that's the type of effect you can get just by allowing it to come up where you want it. The roses here this season have been absolutely spectacular so far. This is Madame Isaac Carrier, one of our favourite massive climbing roses. Stand back and you get the full effect on the northwest facing wall back of the conservatory we film in quite often. But she's also doing her thing on the absolute north facing wall here up to around seven meters it's a really good chateau covering rose which i think is probably what it was built for or bred for the little pink one coming there is madame isaac perrier which is a supposed madame alfred carrier sport but in pink beautiful large heads scented just a, about a week week and a half later and two more madame isaac carrier yeah, growing on the barn, much different pruning techniques. We did a video showing you the different ways you need to manage this rose to get it to flower on a south facing wall and a north facing wall. But just look at these hollyhocks. In about another couple of weeks, these are going to burst into colour and pick up after the flowering season of the roses behind them. The May and June flush that we've got on now is finished. Well, I'm making my way now round into the what we call the old cutting garden. It used to be the vegetable garden. Still has an awful lot of fruit bushes in it, most of which are going to have to move. But this is the new bit of garden we created behind the new barn conversion. First of the three barns that have been converted here. Now looking very settled in its position. Selection of the hostas in pots along the back, enjoying the shade of the north face, but. Just look at the morning sun coming here from this little garden. A lot of herbs in here, fennels, thymes, marjorams, all still planted in, but we're gradually thickening in with more flowering herbaceous, including lupins, geums, cicerinchiums, lots of young roses planted into this border. Created at the back here, a little seating area I'm thinking we may extend this out into what was an old fruit cage here on the back which is now really a rose support for what again is about to explode this Paul's Himalayan musk just running right through this old apple tree at the bottom of this garden. The little area takes us out onto the National Trust land and the footpaths beyond and this is the next section of the garden we're going to develop here. Still got a mixture of vegetables, fruit, still got a row of onions. I just love it, something very French about finding a well-weeded row of 
red onions in amongst hollyhocks. Those are daylilies that we've just planted out to grow on, Cicerinchium. We've got a row of wild feverfew just along the front. Again, just seedlings that we've pricked out, but by the end of June, this is going to be a mass of white and yellow flowers picking up in a smaller way from the oxeye daisies that are still seeding and growing in here well. All this fruit's probably going to have to move. That's the barn conversion we've just shown you around in a separate video if you're interested. But coming around here from the little patio area, walking back down towards the barn. More oxide daisies, the pots, and coming around into the old, it used to be called the kitchen garden. It was a herbaceous border, still is, but it's planted principally for autumn colour with a load of daisies and tansies and roses. Just look at this border. The generous gardener, just about to burst. Paul's Himalayan musk, just starting. I love the way these buds come out. This really strong pink and then fade almost immediately to this creamy white. But just look at the volume of bud we've got to come on on this. Really gonna be spectacular. And I've got my lemon trees out here, trying a couple of them in this different position. Had a bit of a mixed season with these so far. I had to give them a bit of a prune because I did put them out a little too early and with the cold weather they weren't too happy. But the most spectacular area at the current time is the new quadrant garden which is just looking spectacular. The pigeon bath in the centre, herbaceous geraniums, delphiniums, spires of foxgloves. The mass planting of the catmint, the giant six hills catmint, one of our favourites, with the circium, the rose arch behind, mixed irises, including what I call Egyptian, but I'm told are Siberian, and the long iris border in the background, all filling in to give this mass block of colour, which this time of day is just spectacular. Here we go from a different aspect. Alliums in the foreground, planted through lavender, which will pick up as they finish. Circiums, Philadelphus, catmints, and a rose arch, which I fully expect by end of this month will be a wash with color. Got quite a few little new areas of the garden we're developing up. Nice, what was borders a pink but actually turned out to be a white wisteria here. Just goes to show, always buy them in flower, not by the label. And these long walks really filling in nicely now. I showed you the creating and planting out this little new iris border around the bird bath which we're going to have to keep very well watered this season. But these long borders now just coming into there. They're quite narrow these, so keeping them full of flowers quite difficult. Another generous gardener. And then these Siberian irises just looking fantastic. We've got three or four different varieties. The main one we grow is so easy and strong and vigorous is this dark blue also discovered this little lilac-y mauve one just tucked in here which is doing very well which we want to propagate up and divide and this beautiful white one here look absolutely fantastic so we're definitely going to do some more work with these propagating them by division later in the season when they finish flowering I'll do keep coming back to this mixed planting at the moment. A little bit by accident, a little bit by design, but what a gorgeous combination. The white Cicerinchium, Siberian Iris, simple chives, and then the taller blue Siberian Iris just behind it with the backdrop 
of the bearded iris poking through almost a carpet of oxeye daisies. That's a fantastic weed to have in your garden, isn't it? Thanks for watching.